thank you. I, I can't believe I had music to introduce me, but um, <laughs> definitely please call me Owe. Uh, it's interesting to see my full passport name um, uh, in the invite. I don't normally identify with Renee Johanna, so when someone says it, I wonder who that is. Um, but thank you very much for the invitation, um, PIDS. Uh, maybe a, a bit of context on, on who I am so that you have an idea of where I'm coming from as I respond uh, to this wonderful presentation um, from Dr. Maria, if I can call you that. I'm very bad at pronouncing long names, including my own. Took my parents a few years to, uh, to teach me how to pronounce Rui Vivar. Um, my mother said Rui Vivar, and my father said Rui Vivar. So I still don't know which one it is. Maybe uh, somebody can tell me. Okay, uh, I'm here wearing two hats. Um, my background is as a development economist, not as a private banker. Uh, uh, I did graduate work and undergrad in, in the US at Harvard, and my PhD is from MIT where I taught. I also worked at the IMF. Then I found myself in the private sector quite early in my career, and I spent the bulk uh, of my career at Goldman, where I was a portfolio manager investing in emerging market fixed income, and I did that for almost two decades. And after that, uh, I found myself working for one of our clients, which is GIC, the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Singapore. And there I worked for the group chief investment officer focusing on thematic long-term investments for the total portfolio uh, of that sovereign wealth fund. And from there, I found myself in the private bank uh, of Singapore, which is uh, the Bank of Singapore. So my comments are gonna be a little bit barbelled. Um, my uh, response to your work will be a little barbelled. It will be coming at it from the perspective of an investor but also coming at it from the perspective of somebody very interested and focused on, on, on development. And the other caveat that I would like to share is that I am not a Philippine specialist. And I love being at PIDS because I learn so much about the Philippines. Even though I am originally Filipino, I am very embarrassed to say that I'm not a Philippine specialist. But I am an emerging market um, specialist, and so I can give a cross-country uh, cross perspective uh, that may add to the discussion. So, um, firstly, Dr. Maria spoke about three things, or should I say used three different lenses, the macro, the micro, and then select topics um, from recently released World Bank reports, especially on innovation and the adoption and how that can be used um, for enhancing productivity in emerging markets. I'd like to focus on the first two, maybe, because I don't really have that much time, and I've already spent... 80% of my time introducing myself. So for the 20% um, of the time I have left, I'd like to talk about economic growth. And, and why is it important? Why is it important for us as investors? Why do I, as a portfolio manager, as a portfolio strategist, speaking to my clients, why do I look at economic growth? Well, as you know, when the private sector invests, they're interested in basically a basket of cash flows going forward. That basket of cash flows is a probabilistic outcome. It's not known with certainty what your cash flows will look like. It's not known with certainty what your discount rate and your risk that uh, you're taking on board looks like. So you have to make your best guess when you put your money into foreign direct investment, into bonds, and into equities. So from that perspective, an investor, say investing in public equities, because that's kind of the standard approach to getting exposure to the Philippines or to any other emerging market, we'll look to see, well, what is the prospect of the cash flow situation of earnings in any of these companies? And so they will look at a variety of different factors, all the way from top-down macro to kind of sector to more idiosyncratic. What does that company look like? What is its so-called moat and ability to maintain competitiveness as the market changes? But a big factor is the macro. And a big factor being macro means growth, me means real GDP growth relative to the developed world. And unfortunately, unfortunately, what we have seen, if you look at emerging markets in aggregate, is that the emerging market so-called growth premium, because emerging market countries have been growing at a faster clip than the developed world for a variety of reasons. They're 
further away from the technology frontier. There's greater scope for catch up. There's so-called unconditional convergence where um, less developed countries can grow faster because they're further away from that development frontier. They have demographic dividends and so forth. Anyway, that growth differential between emerging markets and developed markets has been compressing. And because of that, the interest of investors to allocate away from the US S&P or developed market equities into emerging market equities is diminishing. And you're starting to see that in the portfolio flows going into emerging markets. You're seeing that becoming a more net outflow compared to what it was 10, 20 years ago. So that's why um, wearing my development hat, wearing my investment hat, you know, the prospects of economic activity in the emerging world, specifically in the Philippines, are quite critical to driving, well, will there be that kind of capital flow going into the country that has, in a sense, also been quite foundational, right? This is a country with a huge current account deficit. It's um, improving, but the capital flows, not just from foreign Filipinos who are remitting, but also from foreign direct investment in portfolio flows, is very important in sustaining that large deficit and the peso and the stability of the peso, which also has ramifications. So when I think about real GDP in the Philippines, there's really one key area beyond AI, which everybody is you know, trying to contend with and trying to figure out how do you actually commercialize it? You know, what is the return on equity for, from the AI, um, the AI interest and the AI momentum? But in the Philippines, it's a question of deglobalization and how does the Philippines position itself in an era where you have multipolar uh, multi, multipolarity ac across different manufacturing hubs where there is an interest from multinational companies to reconsider China um, as a key manufacturing area and to diversify from it. How does the Philippines look in being able to capture that what I call China plus one dividend and a JIC and it's you know very public now. I mean I did a lot of work on on, on that, not just in the Philippines, but in, in other countries. So I would say that there are, you know, with, with these big deltas in secular trends, there are costs and there are opportunities. And in the case of the Philippines, you know, one of the big opportunities is human capital. One of the big costs is also human capital, right? Um, as AI evolves and as there's greater adoption, the fact that the Philippines is has had this competitive advantage because Filipinos can speak English better than the Queen's English. We now have AI which can take any accent and neutralize it, which can take any language and turn it into an international sounding English accent. So that competitive advantage is something that I think the country needs to, um, needs to grapple with and understand and use those kinds of AI tools for its advantage. So, I've spoken already quite a bit, but I do want to say that, you know, that deglobalization trend, trying to, you know, I'd love to hear from the panel, um, from Dr. Maria, her views around how countries can lean into their competitive advantages, which the Philippines has many, how it can develop competitive advantages that are nascent, um, and how it can, you know, how a country can make sure that based on its natural endowments, whether it's people or resources, can be able to be as competitive as the Vietnam, the Malaysia, the Thailands, which frankly are getting a lot more of this China plus one diversification of multinationals than the Philippines. <coughs>